misinterpretation on screen. It's nothing new. In fact, it's probably one of the truest things that can be said about the movie industry as a whole. But from the early years of cinema, misinterpretation has always existed. And that's misinterpretation in many, many forms. Another complex topic, it does slightly follow on from last week's discussion with Helena Goldberg. So if you haven't watched it, please go back and watch last week's episode as well. I want to talk about the idea of being other. It's a term I wouldn't say I like to use, but Hollywood certainly likes to play between being Hollywood's definition of normal and anything that falls outside of that. As a society, we're very quick to blame fashion magazines and social media for the poor representation of various people. Yet film and TV have such an immense impression on this too. Only recently has actor Riz Ahmed taken the fight for Muslim representation in the media a lot further. And this should have been finished and dealt with many years ago, not now in 2021. At the same time, were no black people available for the Friends reunion, one of the most common questions circulating the media as the hotly anticipated revival returned. But representation is is not just about race and colour, it covers ageism, sexism, sexuality, gender, mental health and so much more. Not always, but often in Hollywood, it feels as though, for example, older actors and older characters seem reserved for senior home films, grandparent-led family films and bit parts from still rare, still ridiculed portrayals of senior characters on screen in popular films from 2015 to 2016. The statistics did show that out of the like percentage of the named or significant characters of a discernible age, just over 10% of them were age 60 or over. This led on to a huge call for action, which is still happening now. We can also look at the representation of culture and place looking at somewhere like Mexico it's often shot in these yellow hues or with a sepia tinge and the argument stands that this is to show the representation of heat but I think we're beyond the need to treat visuals and audiences in such a way I've never seen a film set amid a, a British summer a Grecian getaway a Kenyan adventure use the same device the short and the tall are reserved for the sci-fi fantasy fairy tale the other goblins, the gremlins, the giants, the oddities in strange and wonderful worlds, and those who do make it into other genres of film are often turned into a mockery, a caricature, a bit part. They're overly described or overly linked to their attribute. They rarely play the leads, and if they do, again, there's a catch. Children's films, in the same way, often paint larger characters as either awful or the antagonist. I am trying to refrain from talking about TV, but such a great example of bodies on screen is from Leonard Dunham's series Girls. It's probably the first show I saw in my adulthood that treated sex and body image as the very, very real things that they are. They placed a larger woman with a skinnier man. They didn't try to justify how two such people could be together in a way that so many films do. They just never mentioned it, or at least not to my knowledge. And Dunham's character wore what she wanted, she never shied away from who she was and I think that costume and body image is just so important in that TV series, it was so well put together that I only wish that more films did it for both men and women of various sizes and body shapes on screen. My last point is on mental health. Conditions like um, OCD tend to be portrayed in the film industry as about washing, checking, rituals, whilst not enough emphasis is put on the other variations, such as intrusive thoughts and only one TV show I can think of did this, and that was Pure, which I think was Channel 4. Um, It opened up a huge narrative about mental health conditions in general, but also about the specifics of intrusive thoughts. Mental health is spoken about selectively, selectively, It's often minimised down to very few forms of mental health, and even then it's never fleshed out or explored. Therefore, it can create a false narrative of what many mental health conditions really are, and it can often disallow people to be as open, almost for fear of being tarnished with the wrong brush. The film can therefore be a form of education, and although there is still a long way to go, there are some good examples. Now, representation is far more than putting someone in front of the camera or behind the camera. And indeed, or in doing so, doing it more than once. It's about showing people in their true lives. It's about living as their true selves. It's about allowing every story to be told. 
even down to mental health, it's about having a character with a mental health condition that doesn't define the story, but that happens to coexist. And this is one way where the film industry can actually have much stronger films, much more diverse films. It's just a way to have more stories that can be told. There are some positive examples and here they are.